part of the Quran came to and got into relief by this committee and this, this uh, project was left incomplete due to some unavoidable reasons. So the very fact is that the same tradition is now going to be revived by this center for the development of the Quranic studies through different means. As you came to lecture of the London Gate about the English translation of the Holy Quran, he has given the very good information about different sizes of the Holy Quran, calligraphy of the Holy Quran, translation of the, of the Holy Quran, and different edition of the English translation that were published from different parts of the world. Of course, I came to know through different work, including the work of our London director, Professor Alpha that moment for the translation of the Holy Quran into English <coughs> is going on from 16th century. The first incomplete translation appeared in 1515 from London, it was incomplete with unknown translation. From 1515 to 1580, up to 2017, there is a long history of the compilation and publication of the English translation of the Holy Quran. Previously, there has been the hegemony and the kind of monopoly of the non-Muslim translator of the Holy Quran in the <coughs> But you can change from 1980. There is a very good work that has been first of all done by Dr. Muhammad Hamzullah in Arabic that is known as Al Quran to the And first edition of this work published from Hyderabad in 1945. He was able to develop this work project and in the first edition. He was able to find out 23 translations in the different languages, in the second, 43, in the fourth, 67, and finally, in 1988, he was able to discover in about 120 languages of the world that the Quran has been translated. But as I told you, that previously, Western scholars and non-Muslim scholars have been doing this work for different motive for different purposes that I will tell later on. It was from the 1980 that the Muslim started to take interest. Of course, this was, as pointed out Dr. Professor Tavaisa, this was mainly due to the spread of modern knowledge, particularly knowledge of the English among the Muslim society or by the cultivation of this knowledge by Muslim. From 1983 or to 2017, there have been 57 English translations. Of this, of this, only 57, 56 were the Muslim, and the and the four has been the non-Muslim. In 27, in 2017, it is very matter of pleasing. There has been the 45 English translations in about with less than 20 years. And out of this 45, there are, of, of course, it is a matter of satisfaction and pleasure for us. 40 are the Muslims and 5 are the only ones. I came to know through the work of my student, <coughs> Sajid Chavisa, which has been published from this center, 21st century, Pranic Studies in English, and that is a very good work. And also the, one of the another work that has been done, my Rafir and the Dos, Professor Uspan Slaisal, that contains the contribution, this the contribution of MU to the development of the Quran study. His book is in the book that was also published by this center. As I have said, the Quran study is a Quran study. This is a very good work. But one of the very good points that has been raised by Professor Kudaisal, the lot of work has been done with regard to the translation of Holy Quran into English and other languages. But the fact is, 
Muslims are also taking interest and they are interested in it. But one thing is very much required to be done, to be examined. What, are the, what has been the objective and the motto of this transition previously and now the <coughs> newly? Secondly, what was their motto? Their motto is main motto when the Western scholar has started to translate the Holy Quran into Latin, into English, and other Of course, the title itself shows of that of this translation what was their motto. It is well known to you, some of the well known, as I told you, that the first incomplete translation has the the rise of the Turk law called Al Quran. The rise of the Turk law called Al Quran. And, and as the first English translation, it is known to you, that was by Alexander Ross. And that title was also misleading. The Al Quran of Muhammad, newly English, for the satisfaction of all my desire to look into the Turkish unity. First of all, this Quran came to be attributed or ascribed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Secondly, we also may be confined that this Quran was for Turk and Muhammad And it is very surprising and something that when the first translation was came to be prepared by, as I told you, by Alexander Ross, and the Peter, one of the Peter has advised him to it, and he said that we, we desire, we want to know about the work, about the religion of our enemies. So from this we can we can imagine what was the motto of that And this continues. This section of the fact, misleading, confusing, and the very wrong picture has come to be given by this Western and the Muslim But we are very much fortunate enough that we have scholars like the Vice who, who are trying to pinpoint, to export the many of the distracted files that have been given by these translators or by the scholar of the West. The fact is that as, as he told me, as he has mentioned in some of the articles, that the impact of the Preparation of the bibliography, work about the number of the instructions. This is very much required to examine critically, to evaluate the motive, purpose of the translation, earlier translation, and how they are useful for the development of the understanding of the program. As I told you, some of the some of the commentaries are translation, that was put here, that was the message of the program. Of course, this is, the, this is the point that is required to be done by writing community in any language, either in Urdu, or in Arabic, or in Persian, or in English, to convey the message of the Of course, Quran is the most precious benediction of Allah Almighty, such a pretty number for the mind. Why did? Because this leads to the path that ensured the success in the life hereafter and that, that ensured the peace and calm in this world, worldly life of The main purpose of the translation, translation and the commentary of the Quran should be, must be, to convey the message of the Holy Quran in a simple way. And many of the, of course, the, our Muslim translator, commentator has done, the wise have has shown that they were earlier translated in English, Muslim scholars have been the Janam Muhammad Ghulam Sarwar, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, one of the Majid Daryabadi, and Muhammad Kutha. It is also very important to know that, as I told you, Allah Mashabri, Allah Mashabri definitely advised and exhorted and persuaded the Urma to know the English, to learn the English so that they will be able to prepare the servant literature in their military campaign. Once while he was Mothmat, our secretary of the education in Natsurvodma, it is well known 
that he made in the English language compulsory in the syllabus of the Tuvan. One of his close associates, Allah Masaya Salaman Nabi, one asked his teacher, what is the use? What is the use of learning of English by Morbi? Morbi and Morbi are the capital. Very eye-opener reply was given by Allah Masaya Salaman Nabi. Allah Masaya Salaman Nabi told his disciple, I said, you know, if Orma has been knowing English, if Orma has been producing the books on Quran and the Sira and the Hadith in English, or in Islam of Quran, who does the English one to do? Whether Muslim or not Muslim, who not have studied the Holy Quran through the translation of the John said, and who not have studied the Islamic law through the translation of the Hadara by Charles Wilton. So this was the message. That was given our whole father, our Allah Masood in one and two, for the development of the different kind of knowledge, which are useful for us and for the society as well. So this is the actually the also the Quran, the concept of knowledge that is given by the Quran, that is given by the Quran, that we are required, we are required to acquire all those branches of knowledge which are useful for ourselves, for our household, for the society. To know that in the Hadith and the Quran, there is no division between the Zunyavi knowledge or the Indian knowledge. Worldly knowledge also. Only the word that has been given. In the Hadith is the Ilma knowledge. Ilma knowledge, the knowledge that is used, it is related in the Hadith, that one of the daily dua, that was rendered by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma ayni asaroka ilman mahapyan varishkan tayyavan vamran O God of my peace, I beg from you useful knowledge, knowledge that is useful. The means of living hope that is lawful for me. And the, I also beg from you the amal of the practice that is maybe acceptable and not to your God. So this is what. I my time is going to be finished. I have taken a long, a long time. I have pardoned from you. But if this was actually my asasad that I wanted to show, I, I, inshallah I will again do, get the opportunity. They will also bring out some point with regard to you. But the last point I want to say, maybe I will. In spite of our development of money in the West, in spite of the close relationship, between the West and the in spite of many of the Western scholars are knowing the Arabi, they are still delighting the Holy Quran while key. It is very much important. Of course, 16th century scholars were to some extent not justified when they, when they used to write the Holy Quran in English by C or by K. But the scholar of the 21st century. It is very much unjustified that they are not able to write the correctly Quran into English. That is one of the very points that always very much reflects I, I am and my mind could not give the reply.
Uh, he, he is very accurate. He, uh, Dr. Kinvai has accurately pointed out places where he misses and places where you can impute a hostile motive to him, but there still is something elevated about it that makes it accessible in English. I would argue that the one translation that shows that you can work for 15 years as a good Muslim and still produce a bad or inadequate translation yes. is my good friend Dawood Pichi and Johan Mahani. This man was, I have met this man, he's a sweet man, he's a beautiful soul. But if you read his translation, you say, mashallah, this, this, this is the Holy Quran in English. And he's trying, he tried so hard for 15 years with the best intention as a good Muslim to make the Quran accessible. And what he produced, it's, it's, uh, I haven't read Dr. Kibai's review of it, but I, and I haven't written my own because I, I don't want to say bad things about people who try hard. But really, you can't read this and say it really edifies and brings the Quran to a new level in English. And then Alan Jones, who's very ascetic and very kind of agnostic in his worldview, but he spent his whole life marinating, steeped in the Quranic Arabic. When he does the Quran, some parts of it he misses, but some parts he captures just beautifully. In fact, I wanted, when I read Alan Jones, 2007, former professor at Oxford for 40 years, only when he retired did he do a translation of the Quran. Some parts of it are terrible, but other parts just rise because he is steeped in Arabic. So no translation. I first of all, I agree. No translation is perfect. No translation is adequate. But you have to dig deep into both the motive, the process, and the product to understand what this We have a really long session. There is a series of tests going on, and today this is the sixth lecture on family life in Quranic perspective to be delivered by Ms. Basirat Fatma, access scholar, so we can. And uh, then uh, there is a Quran week program. Uh, it will start on 20, 20th February and uh, it will continue uh, up to a week from 20th February to 27th February. And another announcement is that uh, you all uh, will be enjoying tea with us, inshallah, uh, right now. And there are some senior professors here. Uh, in front lines and they are requested to join us in the conference room for tea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.